Imagine the year is 1877, and you and your team of bone hunters are chiseling away at the hard ground in Como Bluffs, Wyoming. It's a hot day and you're thirsty, but you're excited and working hard to uncover new fossils, because someone sent word that they had seen a bone sticking out of the side of the mountain, and you discovered it was a dinosaur bone. Now you have unearthed an entire hill of dinosaur bones. You imagine how their huge bodies might have raced across the earth, attracting and attacking their prey. You think how excited others will be to know about this new species you've discovered. For the first time in millions of years, other humans will know about these amazing creatures. Even though it's only recent that bone hunters started finding lots of dinosaur bones, and now it's a real job, called paleontology, dinosaur bones are thought to have been discovered as early as the Greek, Roman, and early Chinese civilizations. Although at that time, when a large and mysterious bone was discovered, people weren't sure what to think of them. Some thought they were the bones of giants or mythical creatures like ogres or griffins. Dinosaur bones found in China gave rise to myths about dragons. In 1676, a naturalist named Robert Plott discovered a huge dinosaur thigh bone, which he believed belonged to a giant. In 1824, a fossil hunter named William Buckland discovered the bones of a dinosaur which he named Megalosaur, which was later classified as an iguanodon. Then in 1854, England Benjamin Waterhouse Hawkins constructed a model of a dinosaur using bones. He held parties and invited others to see his model dinosaur. In 1841, Sir Richard Owen first invented the term dinosaur from the Greek words meaning great lizard. After this time, dinosaur fossil hunting became more and more popular as naturalists searched the world for these rare items. And this is where our story begins, in a race between two passionate and very reckless paleontologists, a time which later became known as the Bone Wars. Our first bone hunter was named Edward Drinker Cope. Edward was born in 1840, just outside Philadelphia. His family lived on a large property where Edward was free to roam and explore the gardens and other open places. He and his family often took trips to zoos and museums, and from a young age, Edward Cope became very interested in zoology. Zoology is the study of animals. Cope spent a lot of his free time reading about animals and visiting the Academy of Natural Sciences, where his interests and knowledge grew. Cope's father wanted him to be a farmer like him, but Cope wanted to become a scientist. He spent more and more time at the academy and began to publish his own research. Next, Cope sailed to Europe and toured there. While in Berlin, Germany, Edward met another scientist named Othniel Charles Marsh. Othniel was older than Edward Cope and was born in New York. With the help of his wealthy uncle, Othniel went to a good prep school and university. There he studied chemistry, mineralogy, and geology, and later paleontology, the study of fossils. He later became the first professor to teach paleontology in the United States. In Berlin, Edward Cope and Othniel Marsh toured the city together and discussed their similar interests. When Cope returned to the United States, they wrote letters and exchanged pictures of fossils and wrote about their scientific interests. Later, they even named species after each other. Back in the United States, Cope used $100,000 he inherited from his uncle to start hunting dinosaur bones. In New Jersey, a pit was discovered with many dinosaur bones. The reason why so many bones were found in mud pits is a long time ago, when dinosaurs were alive, they would get caught in these sticky, muddy pits. And then they would die, and over millions of years, their bones hardened and turned into fossils to be found later. For two years, Cope and his team found many fossils in New Jersey. One time, Cope made a visit to the pit in New Jersey with Othniel Marsh, who he had met in Europe, and they collected more fossils together. But as they were leaving, Marsh secretly told the workers to tell him instead of Cope if they found any new fossils. Very sneaky. When Cope found this out, he and Marsh began writing mean things about each other in the newspaper. They no longer trusted each other and were both known for being stubborn in their ways. To get Cope back, Marsh and his team started collecting fossils in Cope's favorite dig site in Kansas. And this, of course, made matters even worse. In another case, Cope was reconstructing a dinosaur skeleton and put the dinosaur's head on the tail instead of the neck. 
Marsh didn't even hesitate to start writing mean things about Cope, making the situation even worse. In the 1870s, dinosaur fossils began to be discovered in the American West. Cope gathered his team and his tools and headed west to find these fossils for themselves. Not long after this, Marsh followed with his own team. Both began to discover fossils and name them and send the fossils back to the universities. But often they made up names for their own fossils, even though they'd already been found by the other, so they would get the credit themselves. At this time, they discovered some of the first fossils of dinosaurs like the Diplodocus, Allosaurus, and Stegosaurus. The next big dino discovery was in South Dakota, and both paleontologists turned their attention there. It was a dangerous time to be collecting fossils because it was the land of Native American Indians who'd lived there for a very long time and didn't like the intruders. But Marsh and Cope went anyway, and in the process discovered even more new species. During this time, the two did sneaky things like destroy fossils the other found, spy on each other's excavations, and gave people money to not tell the other about their finds. In short, what they were doing was very wrong and very dishonest. Eventually, Marsh began to win the Bone Wars. With money donated from his uncle, he was able to hire more people and supply them with more equipment to find more dinosaur bones. By this time, Cope had run out of money and became sick. In the end, he had to sell many of his fossils just to stay alive. By the end of their lives, Cope had discovered 56 new species of dinosaur, and Marsh had discovered 80, winning the war in a way. But in the process, they spent most of their money on the Bone Wars and practically ruined their lives. In some ways, their competition helped discover new dinosaur species, but it was also destructive to their personal lives and often fossils were destroyed and their work was sloppy because they were more focused on personal fame than getting the science right. Take some time to think about what would have happened if Cope and Marsh had worked together. Would the outcome have been better? Competition is good if it's healthy. Like if they were trying to find the most fossils, but also treated each other with respect during the Bone Wars. But because they were unkind and turned mean, Many fossils were lost and their own lives turned out badly. Think about how you could act differently. You could forgive someone when they treat you badly. And you can disagree, but not be mean about it. Also take some time to think about what it would be like to be a paleontologist, to dig down in the earth and study the bones of ancient species like dinosaurs. Is that a career you'd be interested in someday? Just think about all the extinct species that have yet to be found. Maybe someday you'll be the one to find them.